What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna learn how to do multiple entry boxes automatically with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna learn how to do multiple entry boxes automatically. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so a Codemy member asked me this question the other day, what if I have a lot of entry boxes? How do I keep track of them all? I don't want to create a variable for each one. That would just be a huge amount of code, is there a way we can just sort of generate them all automatically and also keep track of them automatically? And that's what we're gonna look at in this video. And I've created this sort of grid system here with one, two, three, four, five going across and then one, two, three, four, five going down, but you could have as many or as few as you want. And we're gonna look at that in this video. We're also not going to assign variable names to these. So this is not gonna be my entry box one, my entry box two. We're just going to give them one name and then we're gonna reference that one name in a sort of special way in order to keep track of what's inside of here. And actually what we're going to do is we're gonna create a Python list and we're gonna just append everything in each of these boxes to that Python list. And then we can reference that Python list however we want when we wanna get the stuff out of this, this box. So for instance, if we type in this, is something we can click here and then boom this is something spits out one on each line for each box and we'll get into all this in just a second okay so let's head over to our code i created a file called boxes.py it's our regular starter code that we always have i made it 800 by 500 eh, let's make this maybe 700 by 500 we've got a an icon and i just called it entry boxes so you know the format for creating an entry box it's just usually uh my entry equals it's an entry box and then we put it in root and that's really all there is to it and we can pack this onto the screen so let's go my entry or grid in this in this case we're going to actually use the grid system so let's go row equals zero column equals zero we can give this a pad y of i don't know 20 and a pad x of say five but that doesn't make any sense right now because we only have one thing uh, but if we then sort of save this and run it, so let's go Python boxes.py and I'm using the git bash terminal as always. We're in our C GUI directory as always. And when we do that, we get this, we get this one entry box and that's, that's normal. We know how to do that. That's no big deal. So how do we create a whole bunch of them? Well, we can make, we can use a loop. We can use a for loop. We can use a while loop, any kind of loop to just loop through however many times we want and just put them out onto the screen. So I'm gonna use a, a for loop and I'm gonna use a range. So let's just say 4x in range. And let's say we want five of these things. And then I could just grab this and just sort of paste this in, make sure you tab over. And instead of row and column, we want this all to be on the same row, but we want it to be in column x. So each time this loops through, x becomes a different thing. So x starts out at one, one, two, three, four, five, we'll get five of these things. So the first time it'll be column one, then it'll loop through again and X will become two. Well, that time column will be two, so it'll go over one, right? And it'll still pad X and pad Y appropriately. So just this alone, if we just save this code and run it again, boom, just like that, we get one, two, three, four, five, five rows across, piece of cake, right? So let's create a button now that we can click and to do something, right? So let's come down here and let's just call this my button. And that's gonna be a button and we want it in root. And we want the text to say, it doesn't really matter, click me. And we're gonna give this a command in a minute, but for right now, let's just say my button dot grid. We want to put this in row two or row one, column zero, and let's give this a pad Y of say 20. Okay, so like I said, we want to give this a command and it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna call this something, right? Cause this is just for 
uh, purposes of showing you so it doesn't have to be clever. <laughs> so let's come up here and define a function called something. And what do we want to do? Well, let's create a label that we can put these out onto the screen. So let's come down here and let's call this my underscore label. And it's a label and we want it in root and we want the text to say nothing right now. And let's go my underscore label dot grid. And let's put this under our button. So row equals two column equals zero. And let's give this a pad Y of, I don't know, 10 or 20 or whatever too. Okay, so if we save this, now this will create a label that will be blank. And then up here, we can print out what we want when we want. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is down here in our loop, every time we enter something into a box, we need to keep track of it. So we need to add that to a list. So up here at the top, let's just create that list. And I'm just gonna call it my entries. And this is just gonna be a blank Python list. So we can create a blank Python list just like this, just by sort of naming it. And now there's nothing in here now. Anytime we wanna add something, we can use the append function. So we can go my underscore entries dot append. And what do we wanna append? Well, we just wanna append this my entry, whatever we called the box, right? So now anytime we type anything into one of those boxes, it will get appended to this my entries list, which right now is empty. Now we can come up here and we can just print that my entries list. So now when we click this button, we want to actually print out the things in my entries one at a time. So it's a list, so we'll have to loop through that list and then one at a time just print out those things. So since it's a list, we can go for, and I'm going to say entries in my underscore entries, which is the name of our Python list here. And then we want to do something. And what we want to do is my underscore label dot config and then we want to set that text equal to something. Well, it's going to be something like entries, but we want this to be sort of like entries uh, plus let's concatenate uh, a line break. So they're on one each one for each line, right? So let's actually put all of this into its own variable. Let's call this entry underscore list. And that's going to equal entry list plus so whatever is in the entry list prior, which is nothing, plus entries plus a line break. And we wanna make sure these are strings, so I'm just gonna wrap this in a string function like that. Now we need to sort of define entry list uh, before this all gets started. So let's just set that equal to nothing. So it's just empty. So okay, we can then take that, add our entry list, which is itself, and then plus or concatenate the looped through Python list item plus a line break. So now instead of all of this stuff here, we could just text equals that variable. Okay, so let's see, that looks like it's pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. So now we can come over here and type in this is something typed in, right? If we click on this, it says entry, 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 because I made an error. What we don't want, we don't want dot entries. We want dot entries dot get. So remember, whenever we have an entry box and we want to get the thing out of it, we need to dot get it, right? So these things are being put as entry box items into our Python list here, we still need to dot get them to get them out even as we're looping through the Python list, right? So, all right, let's save that. Now this should work. So let's say this is something in boxes. I don't know. Now this is something in boxes. And each of these things obviously is, is one of these things. So there's some interesting things here. So what if there's nothing in one of the boxes? Now, if we click this, boom, it still prints out a space. There's something there, null, nothing, but it still keeps track of these numbered. So what do I, what do I mean by numbered? Well, you know, a Python list is a numbered list, right? 
And the things in a Python list start at zero. So the first thing in a Python list is the zeroth item. The second thing is the first item. The third thing is the second item. So this box is the zeroth item. So this is index number zero. This one is index number one, two, three, four. So if we want to reference just a specific thing from one of these boxes, we can reference its index number, which we're just going to have to know, right? So for instance, if we want this thing here, that's the zeroth item. So for instance, let's just come down here to our code and let's just, I'm just going to print this onto the screen so we can see it. So let's go print. And this will print to the terminal, not the actual uh, GUI. But we could just see, now we can go, for instance, remember this is the name of our list. So we can access it anytime we want. So we can go my entries. So we want the zeroth item. We just type zero. But we also have to dot get this because, again, it's from an entry box and we always have to dot get to get those. So if we save this and let's run this guy again. So here we can say uh, this is something in boxes. Now, if we click here, it says this is something in boxes. But if we close this now, hopefully it'll print the zeroth item, which is the, the word this onto the terminal. So if we do that, boom, there it is, this, right? So if we want a different item, we could say, you know, the third item, whatever. So if we save this and run it, so zero, one, two, three, that's this box right here. Uh, we could say box three or whatever. If we click here, box three, but then if we come down here, it says box three. So that's how you can access each thing individually, or you can access them all just by looping through them like we did. So, okay, this is kind of cool. We've got now, well, let's just run this again and look at it. We've got five across, but what if we want rows of them going down? Well, we can just sort of nest our for loop in another loop and uh, kind of tweak it a little bit. So let's do that real quick. So let's come up here and here's our loop, right? So let's just call this column loop because it, it puts one in each column, right? Now, if we wanted, for instance, a row loop, we could just grab all of this and indent it and then make another one of these loops. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. And instead of X, now let's say we want, I don't know, Y. For Y in range, just do all of this. Now we need to change this a little bit because we want it on a different row each time. What row do we want? We want it on Y row. So the first time this will be zero, or this will be one. So this will put it on row one. The next time it loops through here, this will become two. So this will be a row two. And it'll just go on down the list until we have five. So if we save this, and I'm gonna actually comment out this print thing because we don't really need that anymore. So if we save this and run it, oh, we've got our button here. <laughs> we need to make, make a quick tweak for that. So we've got five rows, so the button now needs to be on row six, and the label for it underneath it needs to be on row seven. So if we save this, let's run this guy again. All right, so now we've got five by five, and it's the same thing. So we could say this is stuff row one, and this is row two. And if we click this, we're gonna have to expand this a bit. So this is stuff row one, and this is stuff row two. The same principles apply. We can then come down here and say the end and boom, and then down here is end. And notice there's a bunch of space in between. Why? Well, that's because we didn't put anything in here. If we just uh, put some random thing in here, boom, that will pop up. And again, if you want to access any of these specifically, you just call their index number. So this end would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. This would be the 24th thing. So we could we could print that if we wanted to. Come back to our code and uncomment out this guy. And we want, uh, what do we say, 24? So if we save this and run this guy again, zoom, this would be a last box. If we click this, nothing happens here, obviously, and except for 
way down here, last box. But when we close this last box, boom, gets printed to our terminal screen, just like that. So pretty easy, we could do this. We did this with these for loops. You could also use while loops. You know, we would just have to create counters for each one and then increment each counter like you do for a while loop. A little bit more code involved and uh, a little bit more, more stuff to keep track of. So I like for loop for this a little bit better, but a very, very simple. And you can see, I think probably how you could use this to create sort of like an Excel spreadsheet like app doing that, right? So uh, that's kind of cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash a like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which I really appreciate because it really helps the channel out. And be sure to check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So I pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.